Yellow Journalism and the Start of the Spanish-American War Lying only 90 miles off the coast of Florida, Cuba was long seen as yet another step in the Americans' quest of spreading manifest destiny beyond the contiguous United States. Then Secretary of State John Quincy Adams first gave voice to this idea in 1823 when he called both Cuba and Puerto Rico, quote, natural appendages of the North American continent, end quote. He helped make this relationship with the United, between the United States and Cuba, Puerto Rico, and the rest of the Western Hemisphere more formal when he wrote a section of President James Monroe's 1823 annual message that would later become known as the Monroe Doctrine. The Monroe Doctrine took effect in 1824 and stated that if any European country attempted to establish colonies in the Western Hemisphere, the United States would see that as an attack on them. Even though the United States knew they did not have the military strength to back up that statement, that the English was, were planning to make a similar statement and the United States beat them to the punch. What concerned the United States and Cuba was the large number of failed revolutions on the island to remove Spain as the imperial power there during the 1800s. However, by 1895, a revolution started by José Martí seemed to gain enough momentum for the United States to take an interest in it. Martí's forces conducted a series of guerrilla warfare attacks across the island, burning sugarcane fields, blocking railroads, and attacking small groups of soldiers. The Spanish governor of Cuba decided that the best thing to do was to put these revolutionaries in what amounted to concentration camps, something that Cubans across the island rioted against. In an effort to protect American interests and the citizens that lived on the tiny island, President William McKinley sent the USS Maine to Havana Harbor. Out of nowhere, an explosion on February 15, 1898 took place on the Maine, killing 226 of the 350 men on board. There were three theories as to how the explosion happened. The first theory was the one suggested by the Spanish, who did not want war with the United States. This theory said that something on board the Maine, possibly in the engine room, had gone wrong, and that caused the explosion. The second theory was that there were some who suggested that Cuban revolutionaries blew it up, knowing that the Spanish would be blamed. While the first theory that the Maine blew up on its own was what actually happened, it was not what newspapers back in the United States reported. It was the th a third theory that the Spanish blew up the Maine without being provoked that newspaper editors William Randolph Hearst of the New York World and Joseph Pulitzer of the New York Journal published in their New York newspapers. There is an untrue story that Hearst went so far as to tell a cartoonist in Cuba, you furnish the pictures, I'll furnish the war. The headlines that appeared in both papers were an example of yellow journalism, which presents little to no legitimately well-researched news with sensational headlines used to sell more newspapers. President McKinley tried to avoid going to war with Spain in every way he could believing he could convince Spain to give more freedoms to the Cubans. Unfortunately for McKinley, the revolutionaries only wanted complete independence, and when Spain would not comply with these demands, McKinley felt he had no choice but to ask Congress for a declaration of war. McKinley had not read either of the New York papers and knew nothing of the headlines that were there, but because of the yellow journalism that the people of Congress read, they had been wanting to declare war for some time. But constitutionally, they had to wait until McKinley was ready to do the same.